Okay, this is EE2100, week six, lecture three. So today, actually for the next week also, what we're gonna do, and also this is for week seven, we're gonna work on the ripple carry adder design. So ripple carry adder. And one of the things with any design is before we begin the design on a piece of paper or sheets of paper, what we have to do is we have to sketch out the main ideas behind the design. So it's very important that, and there are formal procedures to do this, like for example, UML diagrams and all that, but I'm not gonna do that uh, for this course because that's not the point of this course. This course is very simply combinational logic design. But the bottom line is um, hand, or uh, design by hand, or what I call a brainstorming, is crucial for a variety of reasons. Uh, for example, that is because, first of all, it helps us see the big picture. I'll, I'll write out the main reasons, helps us see the big picture. Second, uh, helps us identify um, difficult design modules. Uh, third, uh, size, sizes of uh, decide on, helps identify, helps us uh, decide on IO ports, okay? So, and in fact, for many companies, based on your uh, hand design, if you will, is how you choose the specific FPGA and the board that you're gonna use. So for this very simple ripple carry, carry adder design, let's start with a block diagram in the sense, uh, we know that we're gonna use the DE1 board. So our 10 switches are going to be the inputs. So this is uh, five bits each. So let's say you're gonna do SW4 through zero and SW9 through five. So unsigned, so unsigned five bit ripple carry adder. And the output is gonna be, so we have unsigned, so the maximum number we can store is 31. So the maximum sum we can get is 62. So let's say we use uh, two hex displays, so this, oops, seven bits each. And so let's say this is hex zero, and this is hex one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna structure this design. So we have basically uh, we're gonna generate instances of one bit adder and then we're gonna have a seven segment decoder decoder so here is our one bit adder and now what we have to decide is what is what are the interface signals between these two modules now we are free to make, again, these are all design choices. So the choice I'm gonna make, uh, not only for illustration purposes, but for conceptual purposes as well, is they're gonna communicate via integer, okay? Now, one of the things we have not decided on yet is how many integer lines are we gonna have? That is, are we gonna have a, a line for the units digit? Are we gonna have a line for the tens digit separately? Or are, we, are we gonna get it into this seven segment decoder module, which extracts the digits from this line and then outputs it to two displays. We'll decide on that, ideally we decide on that now, but for this simple design, I'm gonna decide on that when we type up the design in Quartus using VHDL. But for now, we can definitely decide on um, what the input here is going to be. Uh, so let me just, so let's, let's do this. Uh, 
pipeline crashed apparently. So I have cord is open, but we're not going get, to get to cord as yet. So what we're going to do is let's do this. Uh, so this is the five bit. Oops, you can't start the name of a module with a number in VHL. So five bit adder is so into this is going to come our as inputs our switches oops four down to zero and this is nine down to five and from the seven segment decoder we're going to have seven lines going to our hex zero and one and we'll turn on the other hex displays but you can see that starting from the top level I'm so I'm doing a top-down design where I'm decomposing into sub levels so for today what we're going to do is so the modules we're going to design are number one the one bit adder and number two the seven segment decoder so we're going to uh, basically next week continue with this design in the sense we will make this uh, we'll simulate this design actually in models and once we make the design we'll also do a signal tap instance of it so hopefully this ripple carry adder gives you a very good feel of what the design process not only digital but in general engineering design is all about however please understand that this ripple carry adder is a very very simple combinational logic design so if you're going to do this in industry, you just implement this behaviorally. And for those in 2900, you actually do this in the next lab where you design an ALU. But again, the whole point of these lectures is to give, the, give you the big picture and the conceptual understanding. The missing pieces have to be filled in by you in the sense by our practice, right? So let's get started. I'm going to close this. Uh, now let me create a new folder. So I'm on my C drive. I'm going to create a new folder called Ripple carry adder. Yeah. Okay. So the folder is empty, and I'm going to create a new project in Quartus. So let's do uh, file new project wizard. Remember that the name of your uh, project must be the same as the name of your folder, and that must be the same as the name of your top level design. Again, your, the name of the project does not have to be the same as the name of your folder. However, uh, it's a good design practice to do so, and that's what I'm gonna follow. So now let me go to that folder, which is on the C drive, uh, triple carry adder, select the folder. The name of this project is gonna be the same as the folder name. Again, that's just a design, design choice that we make. My mouse is just moving all over the place there. Carry adder. So now let me go to, let me move my mouse to a better position. There. Now I should be able to really use this pretty well. Next, next. Okay, the FPG I have is a Cyclone 2 on the DE1. Again, usually for in companies, you decide on what FPG to use based on your design. Okay, but this is an academic setting. So we already have our DE1 board with the Cyclone 2 FPGA. Now, next thing I recommend you do is you import pin assignments. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go up here uh, under lab exercises. And I also recommended you put your system CDs on the desktop so it's easy to access. So here's the message saying it's been imported. So now let's create the top level. And again, I'm gonna do a top down design uh, so you know you can also do bottom up, uh, simple uh, VHDL uh, so structural ripple carry adder using generates. Okay, and we'll do, talk about generates next week. So library IEEE use IEEE dot standard logic one one six four dot all use IEEE numeric underscore standard dot all. So and now let's save this. Again, be mindful of the directory in which you save your files, like Cordis uses the last access directory, so that was lab exercises. But again, just be mindful, right? pay attention to what you're doing. So if you go under files, you can see we have the ripple carry adder. So this is entity 
uh, ripple carry adder is port and I'm gonna basically end ripple carry adder uh, let's see the switches are of type input standard logic vector 9 down to 0 and I have the hex displays I'm gonna use like I'm, I'm gonna declare as ports all four hex displays we're gonna turn the unused hex displays off and it's oh, like oops. it's not if it's when I make errors uh, so I'm just typing this as is like I haven't uh, scripted the lecture that's fine in the sense uh, when I do make an error I want you to see how I fix the error fixing the error in quarters is and again I repeated this in lab I want to repeat this so it's recorded there is nothing wrong with quarters or alter as labs okay I, I hear a lot of people blame the tools that quarters can be better uh, trust me quarters is very good it's just it is up to us as the user to read the errors and interpret it and honestly in combinational logic design people usually um, the designers that I know don't make a lot of errors. Right? It's combination logic design. It can't get any comp. It's not complicated. So some of the errors in that respect, like having said that, which Quartus spits out, I'm sure the designers of Quartus do not even expect uh, users of Quartus to make such errors. Again, uh, don't complain about the tool. Learn the concepts and about behind digital logic design, and that will, and also that should help you definitely use the tool effectively right so let's get back top level of oh my god this, um, purple sorry about that carry adder is begin and top level okay. uh, so now what we're going to do is we're basically going to create the modules. So let's do that. So component, so let me do the one bit adder is port in component. So the inputs are going to be, so if you recall from our earlier lecture when we designed the adder, uh, we're going to do a full adder. So one bit, uh, let's do the, let's make this number, one bit full adder. Okay. So the inputs are going to be the carry in x in y in of type standard logic okay the output is going to be c next si of type standard logic and this one will design structurally but there it is um and then let's do the seven segment decoder component seven segment decoder is port uh let's see input is going to be now let again going back to our picture we decided on the input being an integer in integer range 0 to 10 and we'll we're going to display only digits 0 through 9 but we'll use 10 as a special um, code in the sense that when it gets a 10 it'll turn off the hex display and this is actually a concept in computer science called data directed programming in our case it's data directed design so we're using the fact that uh, the range of integer digits is only 0 through 9 so 10 is a special data that tells us to turn off the hex display right so this is hex out it's going to be out standard logic vector nine down to oops what am i typing six down to zero and that's that and then in component so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to design the Let's design the seven segment decoder. Make a new VHDL file. I can design the adder. I'm just going to design some segment decoder. Uh, library. Let me make sure I typed in the library statements. I might not have. No, I didn't. Okay. So again, well, remember I told you in lab, once you get the component declaration, just copy it in. And in lab, let me type this up and address that. I noticed a lot of students just calling these signals. I have no idea why in the sense signals are internal wires in your design. These are ports. So they are, they, yes, they are signals, but you don't call them signals in here. They're just input and output ports. So now make it an entity. And VHDL is not very confusing if you understand, definitely you understand digital design concepts and also uh, end entity. No, that's wrong in the sense end, end one bit full adder. But going back to the 
HDLs in general, you can't just simply memorize the syntax of HDL. You have to understand what the syntax is going to do for you. Okay, that's how you learn not only HDL or any programming language, any language in general, including math. Okay. So architecture, and again, I said I'm going to design the decoder, uh, but let me just design the full adder. So architecture. You know what? Let me design the decoder. Um, so let me do HDL. Actually, let's do this. Let's just leave it. Leave this here. Copy this component in. Uh, let's see. Ta -ta -ta. So this is entity. And entity. Architecture um, behavioral of seven segment decoder is begin in behavioral okay so this is the seven segment decoder dot VHD so now what we're going to do is we're going to say with input integer select simple selected single assignment to let our synthesizer infer the decoder X out is going to be six bits so remember the D1 displays are active low so D one x displays are active low so let me write that as a comment okay so hex out is gonna be so for zero it's gonna be off six on everything else on five four three two one zero so when so when zero notice that there is no x here this would be hexadecimal so this is six bit stand seven bit standard logic vector and notice there are no quotes here so this is an integer okay and then for one it's gonna be on off or off on on off when one you can almost just visualize this it's not that hard so it's going to be on off on on off on on when two and then for three it's going to be on off off on 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 and three for four i'm going to display it as on on off off on on off when four for five it's going to be on on off on on off on when five uh, six is going to be on 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 off on when six and I'm just like closing my eyes and visualizing this as I'm typing this and I'm sure I, I mean I probably made a mistake so what we're going to do is we have only three more minutes for the 20 minutes to end so let me just uh, synthesize this and then next lecture we'll work on debugging this thing but for now uh, let's finish this up so off 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 on 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 and seven eight should be very easy. So I'm not going to close my eyes to visualize this. Oops. Then eight. And for nine, it's going to be on, on, off, on, 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 on. Then nine. And for ten, I'm just going to do it when others turn off hex. Uh, if, uh, let's see, I can do this. Input is not a tens digit. That's it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is so one of the things you don't do is you put everything together and try to then see if the design works. That's not design. I don't know what that is. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to test the hex display by first uh, creating an instance. So let's call this hex zero. Uh, uh, decoder is going to be an instance of seven segment decoder. And the port mapping I like to use is this way. In the sense input integer, I'm going to say for now is 2. And then hex out is going to be hex 0. And then turn off other hex displays. Okay. So again, we're running out of time. So what I'm going to do, 1, 2, 3, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. I'm going to just synthesize this. And if it works, that is, we get, sorry, that is, if we get something that makes sense via the RTO viewer, we will, I'll definitely stop there because I don't have time to do anything else. So let's synthesize this. Let's do a control K. Hopefully I don't have any errors. If I do, then, and in lecture, I got this to, somehow it got moved. Let's see, auto hide, detach. Okay, that's good. This is what I want to do 
this. No, I don't want it to go there. All right. I don't know. Don't go there. How would I make it? Okay, let's try this again. The sense. Okay, it's detached. Okay, hopefully. No, I want to flow. Okay, so it was successful. So let's just look at the RTL we were. And I, don't, I want the flow summary to be um, in a, a long, I don't want it to be down here. I would like it to be up here. That's the standard. But anyway, I'll do that after this lecture. I'll get back to the standard view. But let's look at the RTL we were. So it looks like we got something and we're out of time. So next time what we will do is we'll start with this uh, seven segment decoder. That is, we will uh, think, uh, look at how to debug this thing. Okay, and unfortunately, I can't record the output from my DE1 board, but, uh, well, I will tell you what happens. All right, see you next time.